From Bearcat Stadium with all the inside analysis of Alito High School football, this is the Community News pregame show. Hello from Bearcat Stadium, everybody. Dominic Gennetti alongside Tony Ardem for another week of Bearcat football. But before we get to that, that's right, we are wearing antlers, and rightfully so. Our Texas Rangers are in the ALCS against those hated rivals, the New York Yankees, and we are showing our support right now for our hometown team. Well, and everybody in Alito is, you know, walking up at the halls of Alito High School here this week. Well, there's so much Ranger stuff on, you oh, know, yeah. guys and girls wearing the Ranger stuff. You look at the Facebook pages, wow, Rangers everywhere, claw yeah. antlers, and that's what these are. These are antlers, uh, courtesy of Donna Smith, by the way. Yeah. Thanks for that, Donna. Very nice and woman, so we just a huge we, Rangers fan. Thought we'd show our Rangers support with our antlers, although uh, Coach Buchanan kind of gave us some weird looks here earlier. When yeah. We out of here, but, yeah, uh, but, you know, I mean. <laughs> he's, that, he's busy on Boswell, how, though. He's concentrating yeah. on Boswell. Possible. Yeah, but it just shows how big of fans of we are of our national pastime that even on a football show, we're going to bring baseball into the mix. Well, i got to tell you something. You're new to Texas. Football's the national pastime in Texas. It is. And so, it is. Uh, anyway, let's get back down to the All business right. of football. It's ridiculous as we probably look, but hey, it's a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with the Rangers, and of course, we always have fun with the Bearcats. Oh, yeah, the Bearcats. This team is just on fire. There's no other way to say it. Boswell might give us a good uh, run for our money on the offensive side, but we got a defense that's just really raring to go, so why worry, right? Well, Boswell will <laughs> return with two players we saw last year. Quarterback Jacob Stone, Jacob Stone, if I say that correctly, and running back Jonathan Epps. That's Jonathan Epps without the H, uh, as opposed to Jonathan Gray with the H. And uh, Stone's an elusive quarterback. Coach Buchanan said uh, in our weekly meeting that, and you can read that in the community news uh, on Friday, or today, I guess, as we should say. Yeah. And uh, he was saying that Stone is uh, in the Boswell offense better than the Springtown offense we saw last week. Stone, very elusive, and uh, the guy can uh, run, he can scramble, he can go on the keeper, and he can pass. And uh, I'll tell you what makes Boswell dangerous is play action pass and uh, and then draw plays to Jonathan Epps, their talented running back. So Boswell does have it, like you said, Dominic, on offense. It's the defense that's suspect for Boswell. They have gotten in a lot of shootouts. Uh, they needed to stop, though, a two-point conversion against Springtown a couple of weeks ago to win a game. And so that's where the defense came up big. Uh, but Boswell is a legitimate, sound high school football playoff team. And they're a team that if you're not playing your best, even the number one Bearcats, they could come up and bite you. And Coach Buchanan, is, and rightfully so, is very concerned. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, our offense is just going to be dominant one again. And, you know, Matt Bishop, he had a rejuvenated week last week. He was back on top of his game. He was on fire. You know, he had a couple of those takedowns yeah. in Springtown that really set him back uh, mentally a little bit. But he, he really came out, played his game, and he, he was just spectacular. Well, i got to disagree with the mental part. He's mentally tough. That's one of the toughest mental quarterbacks you'll have. But he was 10-11 through the air. That's almost perfect. But when you get sacked twice by Springtown, you kind of lose a little well, bit. Well, so Springtown was kind of giving it all. They were sending eight <laughs> or nine people, you know, and, uh, and the Bearcats are having a little injury problems on the offensive line. But I think all that's going to be cleared up, too. We're not sure about some a uh, few of the players on defense that got hurt in the game last week. We'll just have to see. That'll be a game time decision uh, but uh, again Boswell coming here legitimate playoff team and it's not going to be like your Timber Creek or Byron Nelson you know those are first year programs so we didn't expect much this is a team Boswell that honestly feels it can give the Bearcats a good run for its money and, and uh, nobody would laugh at them for thinking that they're a good solid team on offense and I think the key for the Bearcats is What's the best way to stop someone else's offense is, well, you hold the ball on offense, and that's where Jonathan Gray comes in. 1,132 yards already in wow. just a little over half a season with 19 touchdowns. Of course, he scored 50 in 16 games last year, so it would be kind of <laughs> tough to reach that mark, but I wouldn't put it past Jonathan I think it's safe all. to say Jonathan Gray's got a very good future ahead but of you him. Know, <laughs> and when you look at Jonathan's numbers, though, Dominic, you got to look at that offensive line. Last year's offensive yeah. line oh, was yeah. a question mark coming in, became one of the strengths. This year, it's the same thing. Thing. And, and the offensive line gets the weekly praise from Coach Buchanan, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we're approaching a milestone in volleyball, too. This, volleyball, this could yeah. be quite uh, the next couple of weeks for our volleyball lady cat. Yeah, and speaking of volleyball, volleyball, 6.30 at the Alito High School gym. And, of course, kickoff here at Bearcat Stadium, 7.30 tonight. And yet the volleyball team, if they win uh, against Boswell, uh, another pretty decent team. And they'll have one of their star players back in the lineup, Sam Cool, that wasn't in the lineup 
uh, last year, or last week, when they, last time when they played them, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And it, if the Lady Cats win, it'll be win number four, or 398 for head coach Kathy Goings. So that means if they went out, win at Timber Creek Tuesday, which I suspect they will, that means on uh, Friday, uh, October the 22nd at Azel, that could be Coach Goings' 400th win. And I'll tell you right now, Dominic, there's not too many high school volleyball coaches in Texas with 400 wins. Yeah, when I was in uh, junior college and I covered our – Lady Magic, that was our mascot, the Magic. I covered the Lady Magic softball team, and their coach got to 1,000 career wins because she was there for over 30 years. Right. So that's a lot. That, it's a big accomplishment whenever you, whenever you get into the hundreds and the thousands as a coaching career. But you've been watching uh, Coach Goings since you were up in Graham, and yeah, she is just phenomenal. Yeah, the way that she I think the first time I saw Coach Goings was 2000 in an area playoff game between Graham and Alito. Then the two teams met the next year in the area round in that 2001 Alito Lady Cat team, the only Lady Cat team to make it to the state tournament. And, of course, Coach Goings would probably trade all 400 wins away just for getting to that state tournament once again. And they really got a, a great team. This looks like a lot like that great 2008 team that made it to the regional semis, a solid back row, and then uh, – a, a, a great front row with not just three hitters, but five and six hitters. And same with the back row. When you can put all those players in and keep substituting, it keeps them fresh. So if you get into a game four or a game five, while most other teams in District 5, 4A are using the same players, the Lady Cats are still fresh. And that's what makes Alito so tough in the late going. It's why they won that game five so handedly at Springtown a week ago. Yeah, and uh, we got some celebrations coming up here at Bearcat Stadium. It's uh, Band Parents Night for the seniors, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's always a big night here at Bearcat Stadium. Yeah, uh, well, not outside of Parent Night, it always is, but uh, it'll be it'll be good for the kids to have one last hurrah for the, especially those seniors uh, this year. And then, of course, there's the playoffs, so it, it's not like it ends on Senior Night. It's just the night of celebration. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I tell you what, you know where when Christmas is, Dominic? Yeah, that's when football ends around here in high school football oh, in Toledo. So don't make any plans before Christmas on I'm Friday not. or Saturday nights. But I guess it's prediction time now. Yeah. It is. It is. You what go it, first, or I go first. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go first because um, I know. I, I think last week I, I did all right. Yeah, you're pretty close. I was pretty close last week. One point on each side, so I was all right. I am going to say 56 to 21, Alito. I think uh, the numbers on the Boswell offense really show really show some competitiveness there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a. A good run, but that only be in the first half. Second half, Bearcats will come out and just dominate and get get the 56 yeah, points. I like the 21 points too. And that's good. That was uh, had a, what I had in my mind in my uh, prediction too. 56, a good number too. Uh, I'll, just, I'll go back one and say 49 to 21, Bearcats. Okay, and that defense is going to come after them. You think? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, next to that prediction. What do you think? I, I'm going to say uh, Ranger, Rangers in seven because uh, I, th I feel like the ballpark in Arlington, or excuse me, Rangers ballpark in Arlington's had three names now. Uh, you know, it's going to be like the Metrodome for the, for the baseball playoffs, only outside. It's going to be loud. People are going to be crazy. People are going to be loving it. So it's going to be hard to lose. Uh, for to uh, excuse me, lose at home for the uh, for the Rangers this go around. So I'm going to say seven because because it's also going to be hard to play in Yankee Stadium in the playoffs as well. So I'll say seven games. Uh, so next it, week we're going to be we're going to be celebrating big time. There's no rules about predictions when two people host a show. And out of no, there is for the Yankees. I'm going to say Rangers and seven also. Okay, okay. Well, you know, and and that's because you know the Yankees, even though they were swept here, they still they still played hard. They're a hard-playing team, and as are the Rangers, so it's going to be a... Yankees in the playoffs, a lot different animal than Yankees in the regular season. Let's hope the same for the Rangers, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, look at how they were in the 60s with Manuel, Maris, and Barra. So know, go Bearcats guys. and go Rangers and go Lady Cats. Yeah. But and not necessarily in that order, just all, yeah, all at just once. Yeah, all, just all at once, all together, all, all power to them all. We can't guarantee if we'll have these antlers uh, next week or ever again, but another thanks to Donna Smith. And always remember, before, during, and after the game, you can see highlights at community-news.com. That's dash minus symbol, hyphen, however you guys want to put it, just community-news.com, and uh, be, be sure to be up to date with all the video and all the highlights. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.